Welcome to ProStructure's Drawing Creation Workflow videos. With the drawings ready, we can now start annotating the bars. Simple operations such as moving labels around are straightforward and you just need to drag a label around on the screen while holding the left mouse button. Before continuing on with explanation how to edit the labels themselves, let me go over the general drawing settings found under main bar defaults. In this toolbox, you can specify display characteristics of 2D rebar representation, such as color, line weight, and style. And you can also choose to ignore level symbology if one was assigned, and specify if all bars should be drawn as full-size bars instead of individual lines. Same settings can also be applied to bars categorized as strips, for example, the distribution in the top beam. Next step is checking the bar range settings. Here, we can specify to either detail all bars in a range or hide the delimiters altogether. Lastly, there are settings for longitudinal bars. We won't see any effect of those here as we don't have a section through the elements, but color, line weight and line style can all be set here. This concludes the section of general setup. Now let us focus on level defaults, which will give you more clarity on rebar representation in 2D space. Here you can see sublevels that are created for 2D representation of bars. What this means is that the default 2D representations of bars are placed on levels of the same name as 3D bars, just with an appended name. As an example here, P3 bar wall level 37, level 11 and level 10. Next tab allows to modify the settings for bottom or fireface rebar. Miscalness tab gives us a bit of control over symbology. Level 37 is typically used for labels and text, and below you can see that you can turn off extension of level aim, so again you would not have a level PC rebar wall level 37 for example, but just level PC rebar wall. Next setting we can toggle is the inheritance of 3D level properties. So color, weight and line style would be inherited from the 3D level. To apply those settings, we need to select rebar attributes and click update. As you can see, the 2D representations took on the properties of the levels in the 3D model so colors and line styles. Let us now focus on the annotations themselves. Click on modify rebar icon in 2D rebar section of the ribbon. Now select an annotation to edit. A new window will pop up, so let us go through tabs therein. First, let's check the leftmost tab describing main bar attributes. This controls the same settings as main bar defaults tool we used before, however you can override those settings for each annotation separately. You can change bar display to full size, set color, weight and style and use couple of toggles. Next up is bar range attributes, where you can have a couple of rudimentary settings to toggle. Following that, there's bar label attributes, where you can specify text properties for labels such as text style, color, weight and justification. Next we have level attributes, as mentioned before, they influence the appended level name based on layer. As an example here, you can see this annotation on level 10, however, if we change the layer to a different one, the appended level name will change as well. In this instance, the whole annotation was moved to level 12. Next tab is bar and details. With this, you can mark bar ends with ticks, so if you have overlapping bars, you can distinguish those bar ends more easily. With a couple of buttons, you can switch annotated sides, uh, as well as move the label placement to exact positions, or you can select the next end of a bar to annotate.
The following tab is bar range display where the overall appearance of delimiters can be set. We can detail all bars, set dual or hide delimiters, and with the offset buttons you can control which bar gets highlighted in a particular range. Type of delimiter can also be changed on the bottom toggles, first being a typical bar delimiter, next to our start and end delimiters where only the first or last bar in a particular range gets highlighted. Next one is a dual delimiter, which combines two previous ones. The last two are external delimiters, where the delimiter line is positioned outside the bar. You can move the delimiter line itself with two buttons on the right. And finally, the most important tab, the main bar label. Here is where you specify exactly how the annotations will look like. In this example, we have to click New first, as we don't have a label. Then we can specify if we want an arrow, line, or delimiter label. Let us use the arrow delimiter with dot terminator. Unlocking the origin will allow choosing a specific point of origin on the limiter or a bar. The angle lock allows to lock the label lines to 0 and 90 degrees. Finally, the text that's displayed. We can select one of the presets available. This will input a code reading specific rebar properties. Left click on a delimiter and place a label. Reset to actually place the label. With one label created, let us modify another. Click on an existing label. As an example, here you can see Unicode symbols can be used in labels. Diameter in this case. Select line label this time. We can click anywhere on either the delimiter line or rebar itself to place a label on one of those lines. Let us place another label type, the delimiter line label. This will allow extension of the delimiter line outside the range, in this case to the top of the drawing. And second click allows the horizontal placement of a label, followed by right click to accept the placement. Now here, when we accepted the label, it disappeared. Sometimes happens when a label is modified from existing one, we need to refresh it by using modify rebar tool on it again and re-accepting it. Now let's open the modify rebar on one of the labels and go to presets and click help. This will open a small window with the explanation of code commands you can use for various properties of rebar you would want in your labels. You can add commands to a preset or straight up text. With this tool, we have four lines to utilize for the label. Position of the text can then be specified with the position drop-down list. Thank you for your attention and see you in the next video. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. If you want to see more such series, consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you, and see you next time.